It's the end of October here in our Zone 5 farm in British Columbia, Canada, and frost has come. It's killed off everything summery, but there's still lots going on. You do have to look at the bright side of fall because it is a depressing season and lots of the greens taste a lot better now. So, you know, we've been having fresh kale salads that have been super delicious. Uh, our greens weren't as good during the summer, obviously, as they were in the spring. So it's been fun to get uh, some tasty greens back in the regular diet. Uh, and there's some other stuff too that's doing pretty well. So come along, we'll show you around the farm, we'll show you what's still going, what's going in the ground for next year, and uh, yeah, all the stuff that's dead. So stay tuned! Today is a pretty classic Kelowna fall day. We get like one week a year that looks like fall and this is it. So we figured we better bust out the camera, our, uh, our little bit of fall color and share it with you guys. But gray, you know, drizzled a little bit. So it's a little wet. This is, this is kind of just what it is. It was pretty windy today. Look at all the... Yeah, we've, we've been getting a little bit of wind, which we, we're pretty lucky here. We get very little wind, so our, our plastic has <laughs> flown all over the farm, which is fine. It, it could be on stronger, <laughs> but we don't get wind, so it just kind of gets draped there. And uh, I mean, all of this, we kind of, we've given up a lot on, on the farm uh, for the selling. There's still lots and lots of food in here to sell. We have three full beds of carrots. There's like 10,000 carrots in the ground. There's multiple beds of beets in the ground. They're, they're good for picking. You know, we have kale, we have Swiss chard, we have lettuce. We, there's still lots that we could be selling, but we've, we don't been, want to. <laughs> we've been so busy doing just catch up for a lot of these projects and tasks that we needed to get done this year that we kind of had pushed to the side that, you know, at this point, we're pretty comfortable pushing the selling to the side. But I am hoping that as we wrap things up a little bit, maybe I'll have a few more weeks of sales. And if not, there's, you know, every time a friend friend comes to visit, they get sent home with a, with a box of veggies. Our leeks are finally starting to size up, so if you're in the area, you can drop by and take a leak. That's a joke. We're not going to share our leeks. One of the most exciting things that has happened since our last, our last tour that we did is this, which doesn't look like anything right now, but this has over 1,500 garlic bulbs planted in here and we are really excited to have this much garlic in the ground for this much garlic next year. We love growing garlic. Garlic grows really well here and we were really happy with how well it sold. So we've, we've three times our garlic production. Last year we had 500 heads, which was amazing. We were so excited for it. And so we're three times as excited for the 1500 that I planted in here. I'm really excited about a new way that I'm trying to grow garlic. Um, normally I space my garlic kind of like 10 inches by 10 inches and this year you know I kind of gave them a foot of distance so that I can run a hoe in between the garlic for weeding it 
but I did them tighter together. There's about six to eight inches between them in the row. And so I was able to fit a lot of garlic into every single one of these garlic beds. These beds are 50 feet and there's probably 300 heads of garlic in every single one of these beds. So I'm really excited to see if this spacing works to still get some really nice sized garlic uh, because this should be easy to maintain uh, but get a lot, a lot out of a, a pretty good space. So, oh, I can't wait. Garlic, garlic's one of those things. You plant it now and then you harvest it in the middle of summer. So it's like the nine month crop, but it's fun. I love garlic. Another thing I don't think we've shared with you yet is we put up our other uh, high tunnel. These are just the basic caterpillar tunnels from Farmer's Friend that we picked up secondhand from, from a friend of ours. And we had this kind of just sitting out in the field all summer waiting to get put up. We finally got it up and we got some, we moved our, our uh, landscape fabric for lettuce into here and planted into it. Um, but by the time we got everything organized, the, our water was turned off. So I, I don't know how well things are gonna do in here because there's no water that's it's not getting watered it's super dry so I suspect it's it's not gonna grow much but it's it's up and it's ready it'll it'll be here for us to plant into it early next year and having having this fabric down will hopefully keep the grass from going a, a, a little less crazy every single time we open up a new space it's just cooch grass cooch grass it's just horrible it's already, it's already coming. Don't do that. Don't, not, you're just wasting my, it's really exciting to be extending the farm further down the property. You know, all this garlic and this, this new tunnel is, is more space, more, more growing zones for us to work with. And it's exciting to imagine how much more we can grow next year with all of our experience from this year under our belt as well as as new growing spaces opened up oh poor killer oh, oh you're so sad you're so sad we still have a ridiculous amount of root crops in the ground like carrots like perfect ones just everywhere beets we got lots of that um not sure what we're gonna do with it exactly but we'll probably pull it all up pretty soon and sell what we can sell and everything else will go to the food bank so end of the season oh, whoa. Whoa. we had a super hard frost it was in the beginning of october which is crazy early for us normally we start getting frost around mid-October you know we're, we're sitting here at the end of October now and this is a period when we maybe start to get hard frosts so a lot of stuff got killed off a lot earlier than I expected we did a whole video on things to do if you have a frost coming and we shared some footage in there of just how crazy that frost was but I've been really impressed with how some of the stuff has bounced back like over here parsley like totally fine it was frozen frozen there's still tons of parsley in there all these kales these have been growing great they're super happy and these aren't super cold hardy kales these are things that will get killed off with the cold weather you know even even my swiss chard bed swiss chard is super sensitive to frost and and it did you know it did get some damage there's a bunch of bunch of stuff that has has died off from the cold but these these plants were so established from growing all summer that the anything that died off it just kind of allowed for a bunch of new growth so over the last week when we've been having a little bit of warmer weather these have just exploded so there's there's lots of food out here we had big plans to get a ton of lettuce into the ground for fall selling and that kind of just fell by the wayside. We have a couple beds planted out here that have that have been doing okay. These actually got completely frozen and, and have bounced back and are looking like they're gonna, you know, become a small, small head of lettuce at least. Um, 
we just we've been busy but it's it really is amazing how how much food is still out here it feels like there's not much only in comparison to the abundance that we had this summer but every time i come out here you know i i can in a minute bring in just armfuls of food there's there's enough food out here to keep feeding 20 families like through through the fall it's it's really amazing our tomato eggplant pepper greenhouse completely gone the frost frost completely wiped out everything in here i was lucky to get most of it salvaged that i could so we we have tons of tomatoes inside in our freezer uh but honestly at this point i'm probably going to clear this out and have this ready for doing seedlings come come you know april when stuff starts to come outside having the landscape fabric down in this greenhouse means that i don't have to worry about it getting filled in with weeds it'll be a nice blank space come spring um but yeah this is probably in the next week or two i'm gonna take these plants out joy is back on the menu pretty exciting thing about fall is uh this is my my favorite green and it tastes good again and we can grow it so i'm pretty excited there's actually a lot of fall crops growing in here uh kales winter boar um, and this improved Siberian, which we're really excited about. The winter boar is like the best winter kale there is from our experience. It just grows no matter what, doesn't matter how cold it gets. This improved Siberian does a pretty good job. It's also got a really tender leaf. We were trying to sell it a lot at the market because we had like so much of it in the fall. And, uh, and people would be like, oh yeah, that's interesting, but I'm not going to buy it. So it didn't do as well as we were hoping, but Maybe next year it'll do a little better. Um, we're gonna have lots of it. We're just gonna leave this in over the winter and then come spring, it should be one of the first things that we're you know, selling and getting to the market and stuff. So, you know, maybe maybe people's taste will change first thing in the, in the spring when they can have this, you know, delicious tender leafed kale, which is what kind of differentiates the, the improved Siberian. The, the leaf is very tender um, and it's got a nice taste as well. So nothing wrong with it, just people didn't wanna buy it. We still have lots of Swiss chard growing in this little uh, low tunnel. Uh, it's doing pretty well. There's some, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but we just haven't been selling it. So I'm not sure uh, if we're going to be able to sell it in time because the, the chard definitely is uh, pretty cold sensitive. So we only have so many days left until, you know, this will be nothing. But for right now, the low tunnel is keeping it safe from the, the you know, freezing night temperatures, but if it gets too cold, this stuff will just all die. Brussels sprout watch 2019. We are finally starting to get something forming. So we're right on track for Christmas Brussels sprouts, the six month crop that we don't even like. <laughs> With the frost, the flower farm is completely dead at this point. I know I was saying that I'm going to be cleaning up in the greenhouse, but my usual technique is to leave everything up. Um, come this time of year, there's lots of little birds looking for seeds, you know, lots of bugs kind of looking for a place to spend the winter. So I like to leave my garden, my garden dead stuff until the spring when I clean it up right before I need to put stuff in. Um, the, this area has been crazy with the little chickpeas. So I'm hoping that they're gonna help me clean up the million, the million seeds that I've dropped in here because there's gonna be a lot of self-seeded flowers that I don't really want come next year. But sad to sad to see the flowers go, but we're we're really excited about what we're gonna do with the space next year. One job we've been working on is trying to pick up all the walnuts that have been falling off of our walnut tree. We have so many walnuts that come off of this. I'm not a big baker. I'm always outside, so I spend almost no time in the kitchen. So I have bags and bags and bags of shelled walnuts that we cracked over the winter last year. So I, I need to figure out a way to, to use these up other than just eating them all because we're going to be drowning in walnuts soon. Oh, look at this crazy man. Look at this crazy man. Where are you going? 
get down here. Do you want to tell everybody about how our family just got bigger? Yeah, one of the most exciting additions to our farm for us happened this month. It doesn't take much to convince Serena and I to get another cat. And uh, we recently had rats in the attic of our house. And it started a conversation where we realized uh, our only mouser slash ratter is Bo. All our other cats are lazy. So we thought maybe we should get a kitten to train up as our next mouser so we don't have all our eggs in one basket. And so we looked around and it was actually harder to find a kitten than we thought. We got this cute little guy. Uh, we're calling him Buddy, which is a bad name. So I'm calling him Booger. But he is adorable. And I think this is his first time being outside. Super fashionable to have a kitten on your shoulder. That's oh, so cutie. He's purring. What do you think? What do you think, buddy? I'm really excited. I finally got time to put the steel siding up on the outbuilding. Uh, it's not completely done yet. I have uh, this side almost, I think the side's done. Uh, the side around that corner is about half done and then the back is about 80 or 90% done. So I've been peeking away at it for the last week. Uh, I got some friends over to help me, and I'm really excited at how it looks. It looks uh, nice and clean, you know, modern. Uh, it should be pretty low maintenance for a long time, which is what we were going for. We figured, you know, we have enough on our plate just trying to keep the farm uh, in good shape that we don't want to be like repainting this this giant barn and, you know, this old house that we have is going to require a lot of maintenance through the years. So we just like. Let's just do a, you know, a nice, simple steel look and then we can just not worry about that building. This stuff is not very easy to work with though. Uh, it's just difficult to cut and to go around windows and there's lots of windows and doors on this outbuilding. So it has been uh, a bit of a pain to work with and that's part of the reason why it's taken me so long to, uh, to do it. That and you know, it's just, it's just hard to find the, the time to do a construction project when when uh, you know our kids are starting school, and you know we're trying to do this and that, and I'm getting ready for my uh, my work shift this winter, so there always seems to be something in the way. But this week we just set aside some time to knock this out, so we're really excited about how it's looking and uh, finally having it finished. Sum it all up, Serena. In conclusion, it is October, <laughs> and. We have had a nice lazy, lazy fall month of not farming. And I'm getting very excited because we're coming into seed buying season. That's the season where I spend all of our money on seeds. So there will be some of that coming your way. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we've been basically kind of spending this month thinking over the summer, kind of reflecting on how the season was. You know, there's lots of things that we want to change, lots of things that we learned, lots of things that we're excited for from this season and for next season. And there is still lots of things out there on the farm and in the garden, even though it, it really feels like the end right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what we can still be growing and I will check you on the flip side. <laughs> See you next time.